dance, culture, and bodies. Seoul, South Korea, February 1993. No, no beautiful. Miss Yeon, my Selpuri dance instructor, half moans and half giggles at the same time. Selpuri is a traditional Korean dance originally performed as a dance of exorcism by priests who are traditionally male. It consists of a powerful yet lyrical series of motions in which the dancer, at times, seems to float or tread upon invisible water. Look me, she commands as she takes slow, mincing steps in front of the single mirror in the room. Her feet alternately rise in the rounded parts of her toes, not the tips as ballerinas do, and slide back to rest upon slightly elevated ankles. I stare and frown. See? No water, she says, mimicking what I have just done, rising to the tips of my toes in the characteristic balletic fashion and neatly taking rapid, sharply pointed toes. Look, water. Holding me with her eyes, she again executes the same rocking, lingering, semi-elevated steps that make her look as if she were treading upon the surface of water. Learning a new dance is like stepping into a new body, I think as I study her movements. Suddenly it is no longer a matter of course to rise on one's toes into plie, knees spread outward, forming mirror images of each other. So much of dance entails doing violence to certain habits that clothe and contour one's body and the way one moves. Each dance form simply requires a different sense of physicality. Miss Yon takes a self-scarf and grabs one end. Measuring about a foot from the edge, she inserts the cloth between the second and third fingers of her right hand, moves along the cloth till she reaches the other end, estimates what is approximately the same distance from that end and lets the section of the cloth hang between her thumb and second finger, then returns to the first cloth border and brings it over her third and fourth fingers to lie between her fourth and fifth fingers. I immediately follow suit with little difficulty. But learning to use it is no simple matter. I realize with a sinking feeling that even my training in Hawaiian and Latin American dancing will have to be held in check. The free and subtly wave-like motions of the arms and hips too would have to be carefully suppressed in favor of the focus on the expressive potential of the hands. Each dance form has its own cultural identity and imprints itself onto the flesh of the dancer who dares to attempt to master it and eventually be mastered by it. This has been adapted from an excerpt from my book, From Ballroom to Dance Sport, Aesthetics, Athletics and Body Culture, published by the State University of New York Press in 2006. For more information, go to www.carolinekpicart.com.